Okay, Stan Dawson again, the director of the Academy of Somatic Healing Arts. This is another taste of the kind of stuff you're going to learn in the whole health coaching program. This talk is going to be on philosophy and physics, the connection between philosophy and physics. And I'm going to use um, Ayurvedic medicine and the philosophy of, of Ayurveda as a template for this discussion. Um, Ayurvedic medicine is, like all of the Vedas, is based on six systems of Indian philosophy, one of which is called Sankhya. And in the view of reality in Sankhya philosophy, the fundamental aspect of the universe is called Purusha. Purusha is like pure consciousness operating actually inactively um, as the basis outside of time and space. The active a aspect of consciousness is called the Kriti. The Kriti is the crea creator of, of the entire universe in this philosophy. When the Kriti manifests into the realm the subtlest realm of time and space that manifests first as the cosmic mind, which is called Mahan. And as Mahan develops further and begins to differentiate, it becomes uh, a hamakar, which would be similar to the ego level of the mind of God. And, and then, as we develop the intellect and the full capacity of the mind, cosmic mind manifests as manas. These five subtle levels are like the are being and cosmic mind. When the mind begins to manifest into the body and surroundings, 20 elements come into place. Five sense organs, five organs of action, five sensations, and five elements. I'll talk about the spin states later. Sense organs, sight, hearing, taste, smell, touch. That organs of action um, would be the arms, legs, uh, and tongue. Sensations relate to the sense organs. So it would be sensations of hearing, sensations of sight, sensations of touch, sensations of um, taste and smell. The elements are space, air, fire, water, and earth. Now when, when mind manifests into the realm of matter, these 20 elements come into play. When the Western minds first observed the system and related it to our periodic table of elements, in which there are over 100 elements in the periodic table, the idea of five elements seemed rather uh, outmoded, simplistic, um, and because of the fact that, that only five elements were named, um, Western thinkers in first looking at Ayurvedic Sankhya philosophy, readily dismissed it as unscientific. What happened later, though, as physics evolved and, and got to be able to investigate finer states of matter and we penetrated past protons, neutrons, and electrons to subatomic particles that are finer than those three that we used to think were the fundamental building blocks of all matter, we've gotten down to quarks, which there are multiple quarks with bizarre names like strange and charming and left, right, up, and down. In any case, as we have studied more deeply the nature of physical matter, physicists found that there were actually five different qualities of spin states 
in, at these subtle states of matter. And they are zero spin, one half, one, one and a half, and two. The qualities of these five states of spin correspond exactly to the five elements. So as physics reached deeper and deeper into the nature of matter, what the physicists found out is that the ancients' insight into the nature of matter was more accurate than their perception when they reduced the physical world to hundreds of, a hundred plus elements when actually there, there are fundamental qualities that are reducible to five spin states. And this type of thing has given scientists and physicists in our current days greater confidence in the worldview of the Vedic culture from thousands of years ago. Now, there are some things that uh, we've learned about the nature of science that um, have been overturned.